Alright, so if you just finished watching my comedy award-winning video on making this cat here, this animated cat that walks and, you know, jumps and talks, uh, then I'm going to show in this video how to take this cat that I made in Blender with the animations, with the bones, and put it into a Unity game that I'm working on, Cat on a Shelf. So, here's that project, the end of the other project with the walking cat, and now I'm going to go ahead and do an export. So when I export, I'm going to pick FBX, and from my choices here, uh, I'm going to pick Armature and Mesh. I hold down the shift key to pick both of those together. Then I'm going to click experimental, apply transform. And let's see over here in the armature, I'm not going to add leaf bones. And for the animations, I'm not going to take the NLA strips. All right. So now make sure that I got the path right cat on a shelf. This is uh, in a folder, a blender folder I have here. Let me just do the export to my game folder instead. So let me go up, up, up. And up. matter of fact, let me just go to the C drive where I put the game. Unity, cat on a shelf, where are you? Assets, in the assets folder here, I'm just going to put in the models. And let me just make a folder for it, and I'll call it cat. And then in there, I'll put my FBX, okay? With all my settings that I picked. Export FBX. And now let's go to Unity here. This is that models folder. Now when I highlight Unity, it should refresh itself and have the cat model there. Now let's see, it has all the animations too. So, let's just check the scale of this. And it's way too big. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's try to bring it down in size to 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15. And I guess I could go into, um, Blender and re-export this, but, you know, I think I want my cat to be about that big, maybe a little bigger, maybe 0 0.2, okay? 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. There we go. So here we are. We have the animations, but they're inside this FBX file of the cat. So to get them out of there, what we're going to do is just select each one and then do, um, Shift D or Control D. Control D. And that's the idle. This is the pounce, control D. I'm making copies and the copies come outside, see? And then this is the stomp or the shove, control D and walk, control D. So that gets me the animations outside. Now when the animations are outside, I could actually do an animation controller with them, yay. So create animation controller and this is gonna be for my cat. So I'll call that cat. And if I double click to open up the animation controller, here we are, let me just dock it right here. All right, and let's just make this full screen so I can take full advantage of my size of my screen. Let's just move these windows a little bit. All right. So now the first default animation in this animation controller is going to be the idle animation. And let's make sure that our cat has the animation controller on it. So I'm going to add a animation controller animator. All right. And then right here I can take the controller. So I'll drag and drop. Boom. Which is this right here. This is this is this. And this goes here. All right. So now I have the cat with one animation on it. Let's press play and see the cat animate. All right. There's a scene view. That's the game view. Let's just look at it. And you can see the cat's animating. But it only happened one time. And then it stopped. So we're going to pick the idle animation and say loop. And the other animation that's going to loop is the walk animation. So I'll say loop and pounce and shove. They play like one time. All right. So we got the this and it's going to loop. And then when we press a certain condition in our animator, we'll play the walk animation. So let me drag in the walk animation. And let's do a transition to armature walk and a transition back. On a transition, when it goes to walk, it's not going to wait for the animation to finish. And it's not going to wait for the animation to finish. Now, there's going to be a condition when it switches to armature walk. So let's add a parameter. And it's going to be a bool. And I'm going to say, I'm going to name the parameter walk. Okay. So on here, I'm going to put the parameter when walk is true. And then on this one, I'm going to put the parameter when walk is false. Let's press play and see that. So there's the cat. It's playing the an idle animation and it's looping. That's good. And now, uh, let's say, go ahead and play the walk animation. And there we go, it's playing the walk animation, and it's cool, and it's a really slow walk. So, say you want the walk to be faster, I think it is here, I click this, and here's the speed. So let's see how fast, if it goes up to 3, or faster. <laughs> Alright, so I'll say in the game that my cat's going to walk at a speed of 4. Alright, let's just do 4. Now, I, I made that number 4 there, let's see if that number stays after I press stop. I press stop, okay, good, the number 4 stayed. And idle animation is playing at a speed of 1, we'll leave it at that. So now we got the two animations there. All right, now the, um, there's two more animations here that we want to do the pounce. So let's see what the pounce looks like. Woo! It's like when you jump. That's a little harder one. Let's do the shove. So I'm going to press play. And that's when you push one of those cans, a shove. So let's take the shove and drop it in the controller. And when do we play the shove? When do we play the shove? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to press a button, and you're just going to shove. So that means whatever state it's in, you press this button, it's going to shove. That's coming from any state that you're going to shove. And we're going to have to have a variable to say when to shove. So I'm going to make a trigger variable, a trigger variable. And I'll call it shove. Oops, I have everything lowercase, so let's keep that way. Shove. And right here, I will put on the condition of I shove you. With that. All right. 
So shovel play, and then after it finishes playing, let's just go back and play the idle animation. So that means over here, yes, we have an exit time. You want to play the whole shove animation and then come back. Let's try that out. Turn that off. Press play. And it's going to show the game window. I'm just going to go back to the scene window. So if I trigger the shove, it's so slow, but just like the walk animation, I'm going to control the speed of it. So let's first try a 4.5. Okay. Let's see how that looks at a 4.5. Oh, that's too fast. How about a 3? Uh, see that again? Trigger. Three is about good, so I'll leave that one at a three. Okay, and then the last animation we have is the pounce. This is the one where we're going to jump up and then pounce down on top of the can. So this one is a little bit more complicated, folks, because it's basically, if I look at the pounce, I'm going to have to break it up into two animations. One where he jumps up and one where he comes down, because I want him to, I want to use a um, flying thing when he jumps up. I'll come back to the pounce one later. Let me take it out for now. So I can move around, I can push stuff. That's what we got right now. So let me put this down here now that we finished that. And now let's work on the cat. So the cat has the armature. This, these are the bones. So I'm going to look in here. And what I want to put are colliders on the feet. So let's find where the feet are. So we got feet on the left. Arm, arm, and paw. So let's see. Let's get real close so I can see where the paw is. Bam, the paw is right there. Let me just turn around here and bring that into view. So this is the paw. I'm going to add a collider onto it. Add a component. Um, physics. Three... A sphere. I'll use a sphere for a collider. There it is. Simple. And let's see what that looks like. It's huge! It's massive! Oh my goodness! So we will just bring the... Ra whoop, whoop, whoop. Ugh, gotta control this radius. 0 0.03, 0 0.01, 0 0.005. Does that look about right for that foot? Let's look around. Let's look at it. Ah, uh, that's good. Okay. So 0 0.005. Let's do that to the other foot on the right leg. Here's the right paw. And let's add a sphere to that one. Sphere collider. And the size will be 0.005 as well. Okay. Now we got the two feet. We must also get the back feet. So those are going to be on what? Probably here along the back. And somewhere, yep, here we go. The left hip, left upper leg, left lower leg, left foot. And there it goes. It highlights. Let's add a physics sphere collider 0 0.005. Bam. And then to the right. That was the left leg, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. Left foot, left foot. All right. Now let's do the right. Bing, bang, boom, right foot, and add a foot collider, add a sphere again here, and the size of that, 0 0.005. So now I have, like, these feet. I have feet. So where should I put the rigid body? Let's put it up here on the, on the, um, the cat itself. The animator, I wonder if this will work if I put the rigid body here. Physics, or I wonder if they have to be on each foot. So I put the rigid body on the cat, and hopefully since these are the children, those colliders will work with it. Now I'm going to pick the cat up from the ground. Now that it has a rigid body, gravity should bring the cat down when I press play. And it does, it comes down. Great. And if I press the different animations for the cat, like walk. Okay, it's walking and the colliders are staying in touch with the floor. It's, you know, moving like that. And let me just try to shove. And it goes back to walking. Alright, so you can see that part is kind of working with the animations and the colliders that keep the cat touching the floor. But, you know, I can't do it from this animation controller. I have to do it from the game itself. So, to the cat, we will add a script add component uh, of a script.